الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رحمة للعالمين وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا شفيع المزنبين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon each and every one of you. Alhamdulillah. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we thank Allah that he has given us the another opportunity to praise him, to thank him to glorify him, to moist our tongue with his zikr and with the zikr of his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today is the last uh, Jumu'ah of the 1444 after Hijri. Most of you are well aware. So it means that we're going to enter into the next year of life or the next year of the Islamic lunar calendar. It also means that one year is deducted from our life it also means that we are one more step closer to our grave, to our yaqeen, to, to that certainty, or to the day of judgment, to the day of resurrection, when Allah is going to ask us about our wealth, about the time, about the life, about the knowledge, about every blessing. On the day of judgment, he will be asking us, and we will be questioned, about every favor that we enjoy in our life, that we had in our life, Allah is going to ask us. So brothers and sisters, it is the part of our religion. It is the essential part of our religion or very important part of our religion to assess what has passed. This is the beauty of Islam. Haji, Haji Sahiban sitting here, Alhamdulillah. I totally forget, Alhamdulillah, it was a beautiful journey, you know, Makkah and Medina. I just look at, uh, at the face of Brother Roger and some Brother Lyndon I'm seeing somewhere here as well. So it reminded me about all the beautiful things that we have experienced during this Hajj, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters. I want to talk about that entire journey, but not this Friday, inshallah, the next Friday. Inshallah, I will talk about that. I'm very excited to share that experience, a beautiful experience, a lifetime experience, I must say. A lifetime experience. While I was saying, as salatu was salamu alayka ya Rasulullah, believe me, I was, I was considering myself standing in front of the Rosa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the amount of time we said this, durood, any time now we saying it, we just remember that beautiful fragrance of the blessed city of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That blessed tomb of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That blessed courtyard of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That gathering that zamzam water there, that sitting with our brothers and sisters, that, that hustle and bustle, subhanAllah, everybody is only worried about the next salat. The only concern they have is the next salat in the masjid. Is the next salat in the masjid with the takbir e ola. Is to make sure that we're going to offer the tahajjud salat. Is to having a special spot in the masjid, subhanAllah. Then you have to leave your room on a very early time. Then and there you will be able to occupy your special place in the masjid. That is the only concern in the Makkah and Medina. Nothing else you think about. You don't think about your health. You don't think about your wealth. You don't think about your family. You don't think about your husband, honey, bunny, wife, children, nothing. Nothing concern you there. I'm being honest. The only concern is you and your Lord. Is you and your Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the experience. Or that is the, you know, experience that we need to test. 
I may try to explain no matter how many times, you will not be able to feel it unless you visit it by yourself, until you experience it with your soul, with your mind, with your heart, inshallah, with your eyes. Then you will say, Ya Allah, I want to die in Makkah and Medina. You will make these kind of the duas. That is why we hear people making this dua and sometimes we doubt what is wrong with him, what is wrong with her, why he doesn't want to die in his own city, why he doesn't want to die next to his parents or somewhere else. What is the problem with this guy? The problem with this guy is this, that he has visited Makkah and Medina now. Now he got addicted of these two cities. He has that addiction of those two cities. Now he doesn't want to leave that, 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 that vicinity, subhanAllah. The vicinity where Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to play with his grandchildren, subhanAllah. Where he used to smile, where he used to eat and walk and talk with his family. And where he made all the beautiful and the, and the wise decisions for the betterment of the Muslim Amma, subhanAllah. So my brothers and sisters, may Allah take all of us, inshallah. 13, what they say, 14, 45, inshallah, should be the year of your hajj, inshallah. Eh? Should be the year where you will be saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Make this intention. Today is a very special day. The last day of the, Jum the last Jummah of the, this year, subhanAllah. Jummah itself has a blessing. The dua which is made from the heart with the sincere mind, with the sincere heart, that dua is never rejected. Just forget about your health for one minute. Just forget about your sources for one minute. Just forget about if you have the means or if you have the wealth or not. Forget all those things. Just make this dua. Ya Allah, take me to this journey with heart and you will see Allah will make the asbab for you hey, ji? Allah will make the asbab for you bhai. Allah will make the reasons for you inshallah to take you for this journey but I just want to share one thing or just share one thing and the remaining thing in the next khutbah inshallah Hajj is for young people that's what I have experienced so I'm not even young I'm 32 over 32 young is between 16 to 30 or 15 to 30, or 14 to 30. That is the youth in, in the Arabic, uh, you know, understanding. Over 30 is not young, is no more youth. Over 30, the minute you walk two hours, you want to sit somewhere. You want somebody to throw the water on your head. That's what I wanted. You, you're studying about the blisters in your foot, and you thinking that any time you're going to collapse. Brother Lyndon, may Allah make it easy for him. They were saying that brother uh, Lyndon collapsed. I said, what is collapse? I thought he, he fall down on the ground or something like that. Collapse means that he is not feeling well or something like that. So Alhamdulillah, we had our challenges. We had those difficult times, but that is the beauty of the Hajj. That is what Hajj is all about. It's not a piece of cake, remember that. I always used to think it's a piece of cake. I'm being honest with you all. Eh? But it's not. People told me, MashaAllah, Haji Sahib, Haji Azad Rahman told me many times, Hajj is not easy. And I always used to doubt him. But it is, truly it is not easy. But if you have the strong mind, if you have the strong will, then it's easy. And if you're looking at the reward, much easier then. What is the reward? You are like a newborn baby. So you don't want to be like a newborn baby just by walking in the garden. You have to bleed, you have to sacrifice for that. The reward is more than anything else on the face of the earth. The reward is non-comparable, isn't it? Reward is unique. You are like a newborn baby. Do you know what does it mean? It means that if you die after the Hajj Mabrur, direct you going Hajj. No transit, no connection, no connecting flight. You know that. We had multiple connections from here to Panama, Panama to Turkey, Turkey to Medina. But if you die after the Hajj, direct flight you have, inshallah, for the paradise. Angie? So, that, this is what it means. Hajj Mabrur. This is what Hajj Mabrur is. That Hajj where you didn't complain about your visit, where you protected your gaze, where you, your, your eyes, your every single thing, and you just there saying, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. So, difficulties. It has some difficulties. It has some challenges, but not the way sometimes people exaggerate. You know, so I must uh, uh, suggest all those who just came from the Hajj, inshallah, and all those who performed their Hajj in their lifetime, when you narrate the stories of the Hajj in front of somebody, try to narrate in a way that it's encouraging for others, not discouraging for others. Be realistic as well, but at the same time, don't say like, this is this and this is that and it's, it's, it's not possible. So if one person is discouraged through your narration, so then the sin is on you. 
So be mindful when you using those words, inshallah. Yes, it is difficult, but the, the reward is immense. Is as long as you have a walking habit, you're good to go. Before performing the Hajj, before going or to uh, undertake this journey, I was suggesting some brothers and sisters that please try to walk 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. And they were like, probably I'm just, just making the jokes. But when they reached there, they realized, they told me, that Mulana, you were right. So I made sure that I'm walking in the morning, in the evening, and I'm playing some extra cricket as well, so that I can prepare myself. It's all about how much strength your feet has, and your mind has, subhanAllah. As long as these two things good, you're good to go, inshallah. You can perform 10 hajj in one year, inshallah. Although it's not possible, but you, know, you will have that strength, inshallah. So we ask Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to take us all to this blessed journey, inshallah, and to make us among those, those who perform the hajj, in a way which is pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters. So congratulations to all those who performed the Hajj, mashallah. And uh, the difficulties that you face, some sicknesses and some problems, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiply your reward. Multiply your reward. Anytime we go up to perform the Hajj, 99.9% .9 time people get sick, isn't it? I, I, I realize that the, the reason behind is this, that you know, when we get sick, what happens? it expiates our sins. So when we get uh, sick after the Hajj, so it expiates all the mistakes and all the shortcomings that we made during the Hajj. That's what it means. That's how I understand. That's how I, you know, I, I, I try to digest this, this thing of being sick after the Hajj or during the Hajj. So we all make, make so, so, some shortcomings during the Hajj. We all have some mistakes during the Hajj. But when we get sick, SubhanAllah, Allah, SubhanAllah, forgives our mistakes and forgives our sins. And at the same time, there is possibility that we didn't do best our hajj, like we didn't give our 100% to our hajj. Probably we didn't make any mistake or know any sin in it, but still probably we would have done some more zikr, we would have done more tahajjud, we would have done more tawaf or something more. So Allah wants to give us a, a special place in the paradise through that hajj. But because of our actions, we couldn't do it. So what Allah does, Allah gives us certain calamities. Allah gives us certain diseases, Allah gives us certain sicknesses, and through that, we alhamdulillah climb to the level which is designed and which is decreed, which is decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the life of the hereafter. This is the beauty of Islam. Islamic teachings comforts us in every, in every aspect. Even when we get sick, subhanallah, there is, there, is some, there is some joy for us. There is some glad tidings for us. There is some hope for us. There is some mercy for us. This is, this is, this is the beauty of Islam. And when we visit some our brothers and sisters, those who are suffering from any sickness, we have something good to say in front of them. What is that? That brother, don't worry, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are falling. And this comforts the individual, isn't it? It comforts him, it comforts her. So appreciate the religion that you follow, my brothers and sisters. Appreciate the deen that you are practicing, inshallah. So brothers and sisters, it is a part of our religion. It is the part of our Islam, our deen, to assess what has passed, to assess what has passed, and to plan what is coming in the future. That is what Islam teaches us. This is what Islam teaches us. We're going to enter into the new year. Let us enter into the new year with forgiveness, with purification, by making the istighfar that, Ya Allah, whatever the shortcomings we had in this year, forgive. All the shortcomings that I had, Ya Allah, remove Ya Rabbul Alameen, and Ya Allah, give me the new life, a spiritual life, so that when I enter into the new year, I'm a new person. And I'm making this promise to you, Ya Rabbul Alami, that I'm going to give my best to you. Because I know my life is little, my life is short. And I know that the minute I will die, there is no return. There is no return. I can't say, Kala Rabbir Ji'oon. That Ya Allah, send me back to the time, send me back in time, send me back to this life, so that I can do some more actions. This is the attitude that we need to build, my brothers and sisters. These are the, some of the verses I just want to share with you. Before I share these verses, I just want to mention one of the hadiths of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where he says, very famous hadith that, that the hour will not come, the day of judgment will not come until the time shrinks. Until the time shrinks. And the, the year will feel like a month. A month will feel like a week and the week will, will be feel like an like a, like a hour and the hour will be like a... Like a, like, a, like a fire, that, you know, that bush fire, that's it. 
So what does it mean? No barakat in, in time. People may be living 60, 70, 80, but there is no barakat. There is no blessing. What is the barakat? What is the concept of the barakah in Islam? To be able to do more with less time. Barakat is, when we say, Ya Allah, give us the barakat in our health, in our sustenance, in our business, it means that Ya Allah, with little, give me more. Or make this little food, or this little provision, or this little sustenance, or whatever the luxuries that I have, enough for me, Ya Allah. That is barakat. When small seems to you big, that is barakat. And when big seems to you small, that is opposite of the barakat. And we ask Allah to protect us from that. That is called ungrateful heart. That is the heart which has no contentment. That is the heart which has no shukr. We ask Allah, Ya Allah, make us among shakirin. Say ameen. Ya Allah, make us among those, those who are grateful. Those who count what they have, rather instead of counting what they do not possess or what they do not have. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the zakirin, not among the ghafilin, those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah not to make us among those, those who are negligent about their life. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun minan nas. There are two blessings. Haji sahiban, the fresh haji sahiban and haji you know, sahibat, and the old haji sahiban as well, inshallah. All those who are hajis here. There are two blessings that many of us take it for granted. Number one, a siha, the good health, and the, and the time, the free time. Use it to confirm your seats in the paradise. Use it to confirm your palaces in the paradise. Use this time to be among the companionship of Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the day of judgment. Use this time, my brothers and sisters, to receive the shade of Allah on the day of judgment where there will be no any shade except the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Use this time to enlighten your, your grave and to enlighten your grave. This time, my brothers and sisters. If you will not use it, this time will kill you. As, uh, as you know, al waktu ka saif. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said that the, 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 the time is like a sword, is like a knife. If you will not cut it, it will cut you. If you will not use it, it will destroy you. It will ruin your life. It will cause a severe kind of destruction. Not only here, on the Day of Judgment as well. On the Day of Judgment as well, my brothers. So let me mention a few things from the Holy Quran, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mu'minin, I'm just, I'm Surah Al-Mu'minin, I'm just going to read and again translate as well at the same time. On the day of judgment, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ رَجِعُونَ أَوْزُ بِاللَّهِ مِنِ الشَّدَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّمَانِ الرَّحِيمِ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ رَجِعُونَ Surah Al-Mu'minun. On the day of judgment, people will come in the presence of Allah. They will be pleading, they will be beseeching, and they will be begging with all the sincerity and with all the ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be begging to Allah that, Ya Allah, Rabbi Rji'oon, Ya Allah, send me back to time. Send me back to this world. Send me back to my life. Why la'alli a'malu salihan fi ma tarakt kalla? So that I can do things which are pleasing to you, Ya Rabbul Alameen. So that I can do things which are pleasing to you. So that I can do those things which I was neglectful. So that I can complete my salah. So that I can complete my fasting. So that I can complete my sadqa, zakat and charity. Their eyes will be open. They will be seeing the reality. They will be seeing the haq. They will be seeing the truth. So they will be actually begging to Allah that Ya Allah, please send us. And Allah will say, no. That's it. The door has closed. The chapter has closed. This is it. 60, 70. That's it. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. But the minute your eyes closed, you can't say anything. Although the people will be saying on the day of judgment, because they will be very vulnerable. They will be, what they say, hopeless. They will be in the need of Allah's mercy. So they will be saying few things which can help them, but nothing will be in their favor. So, فَإِذَا نُفِقَ فِي السُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابُ بَيْنَهُمْ يَوْمَ عَيْزِينُ وَلَا يَتَسَاءَلُونَ And then, فَمَنْ سَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَائِكَهُمُ الْفْلِحُونَ So the ones whose scales prove to be heavy, you know, on the Day of Judgment, there will be a scale. And our actions and our good deeds and our bad deeds will be weigh on the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the ones whose scales prove to be heavy with good deeds, only they are successful. This is the criteria of being successful in the eyes of Allah. Successful is not the one who has good appearance. Successful is not the one who has 
good way to communicate or fame or name or positions or the status or the richness or the wealth or a good family background or, a, or belongs to a rich country or no. Inna akramakum in the And the successful one is the one, who, the one whose actions will be sufficient for him on the day of judgment. That is the true success. That is the true success that we have to strive for. And then, وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُ فَأُولَائِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ And the ones whose scales prove light, it is they who had put their lives into ruin. They shall remain in hell forever due to their disbelief, due to their transgression against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تَلْفَحُوا وُجُوهَهُمُ النَّارِ وَهُمْ فِيهَا كَالِحُونَ The fire, the, the fire of the hell shall strike their faces and they will remain therein with faces pulled up. Alam takun ayati tutla alaykum fa kuntum biha tu kazibun. Now Allah is asking, asking to them. Allah is addressing to them that were my verses not recited upon you, O people, now you want to go back. But tell me, while you were in your youth, while you were in your 40s, 50s, 60s, on your late age, there were not people, those who were reciting my verses, there were not people who were telling you to recite the Quran and come to the masjid and you were just ignoring them and you were telling them or thinking about them, they are the losers. They don't have a proper family, they don't have a proper business, they don't have a name, they don't have a fame, nobody knows them, they don't have wealth. We don't need to talk with these people. We are successful because we have this and that. So Allah is asking them, Allah is shaking them now. Allah is posing the questions which will cause them to regret. Which will cause them to regret, a true regression. That's what the true regret is. Regret is not doing something in this life and and the way you wanted to do and you couldn't do, that's not a regret. Regret is in the life of the hereafter. That is a true regret when you have no option to go back. In this life, you, if you make a mistake, you can rectify your mistake. You can rectify your mistake, isn't it? But in that life, that's it. So, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam takun ayati were my verses not recited upon you and you, consequ you consequently used to, you know, deny them and you used to ignore them. And he used to put their messages in probably somewhere from one year to the next year. One reminder and the next reminder. From one reminder to the next reminder, nothing was changing in your life. Kalu Rabbana Galabata Alina Shikwatuna Vakuna Komandali. And then they will reply to Allah. They will say, Our Lord, our misfortune overcame us. We were losers, Ya Allah. We truly understand now. Every rich person, every strong person and the powerful person. All the king and the queens of this dunya, all the tyrant people, everyone, all those who used to oppress people, those who used to take the money of the people, those who used to usurp people's wealth or usurp people's right, curse and backbite and slander and hurt, they will tell to Allah. They will finally, they will finally accept this, Ya Allah. It's us. It's us that we did wrong and zulm on our nafs, on our soul. Our misfortune overcame us and we were people gone astray. رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ They will say, Our Lord, remove us from hellfire. If we then do the same evil acts, we are therefore unjust. Just remove from here, re remove us from here. And after this, if we do something wrong, you can put us back in the hellfire. Please, one chance. But no. No matter, even if they flip hundred times or thousand times or millions times, no matter if they bring the wealth of the whole world and say to Allah, Ya Allah, please take this and forgive me. Or even if they try to bribe the angels. Eh? Even if they try to bring all kind of the friends. Friends can help you in this world. Or this money or this bribe can help you, but not there, my brothers and sisters. They are only good actions. You are sitting in the masjid. You are guarding your gaze. Eh? My youth, this is what is going to help you. You are looking at the right material and protecting your gaze and, you know, avoiding what is haram. This is what is going to help you in that life. Rabbana akhrijna. Ya Allah, remove us. Allah will say, no. Qal akhsa'u fiha wa la tukallimun. Subhanallah, astaghfirullah, ya Allah. We ask Allah to protect us from this. Allah will say to them, that remain accursed therein. And do not speak to me. Do not speak to me. Somebody when in this world tells us, do not speak to me, your wife or your husband or your children or your parents or even your friend or even somebody from outside. Even the street, street dweller is telling you, do not speak to me. It will hurt you or not. It will shake you or not. If somebody is very beloved to you, very close to you, he is saying to you, do not speak to me. 
what will be your state? So think about, just think for one minute about the one who created Minha, who the one who has created us, the one who has shaped us, the one who has designed us, the one who is who love us more than the love of the 70 mothers. If he says to us on the day of judgment, we ask Allah to protect us, do not speak to me. Do not talk to me. It should make us understand that how much Allah would be upset on that day of judgment, my brothers and sisters. That is why Allah says, Ya yul insan, O insan, ma gharra ka bi rabbi kal kari. That is why Allah says, that O insan, what has caused you to divert yourself from my remembrance? What was so special than me? Who are more kind than me? Who are more loving than me? Who are more generous than me and more protected than me? Why you are running among, behind people? Why you are running about this dunya behind this dunya? They were better than me. This will amaze Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will, it will be amazing although Allah is aware of every single thing. But the way he will pose this question, that oh insan, what, is, what, what was so special that I didn't give you? I have kept for you this paradise for you as well. I promised you. You didn't, you didn't understand my promise and you only deluded yourself with this dunya. You only th thought about that this dunya is everything, this world is everything. This is delusion, my brother. Open our eyes. Our eyes are open, but it's not open. In reality, it is not open. We have earrings, we, we, were the, we can hear, we can see, we can sense, but in reality, we are dumb. We can't understand, we can't sense. We ask Allah to open our hearts. We ask Allah to open the locks of our hearts. Say, I mean, we ask Allah to open our hearts for, for His nur, for His light, for His guidance. Always make the dua Rabbi Shrahli Sadri. Ya Allah, open my chest for me. What does it mean? Open my chest for the goodness, for the guidance, for your nur, for your light, for the Quran, for the Salat. I want to offer Salat, Ya Allah. I want to enjoy my Salat. Open my heart for that. I want to enjoy my Salat, Ya Allah. I want to talk to you the way the Salaf of Salihin, that they used to talk in their Salat. I want to have the same kind of concept, same kind of attitude in my Salat. And that will be only possible when you will leave the sins. Sins are blocking many things. Sins are blocking you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters. Innahu kana fariqu min ibadi yaquluna rabbana. Allah will say, indeed there was a group of amongst my people who used to say, our Lord, we have believed, forgive us therefore and have mercy upon us. Indeed you are the best of those who show mercy. I'm just ending on this inshallah. Inni jazaytumul yawm wa sabru annahum faizun. Indeed this day for their passions I have rewarded them. That they are the only one who are successful. Allah is talking about the successful people, those who lived their life according to the teachings of Allah. Now Allah will ask to them, last two verses. After all this conversation, Allah will ask to them, people, to the hellfire, or those who transgressed against Allah. Allah will ask them, Kala kam labistum fil ardi adad sinin. Allah will say to them, How long did you stay on earth? How long did you stay on earth? According to the number of the years. Allah is asking them, although Allah has the best knowledge. They will say, look, what they will say. Labisna yawman yawm. Fas they will say, Ya Allah, we stayed one day or two day. Ya Allah, we stayed one day or a part of a day. Not more than that. They will say to Allah, Ya Allah, we only spent one day. But in reality, they spent 100 years. And then, you know what they will say to Allah? They will say to Allah, Ya Allah, if you do not believe me, ask the angels. First, Ali Adin ask those who were counting. Ask them. Katibin. Allah will only smile. Eh? Because they're lying. They're just trying to fool themselves and they're trying to make an excuse. They will be very vulnerable. This is what I'm saying. They will find some reasons to get away and go back to this dunya and do some action which are pleasing to Allah. They will say, Allah, only one or two days you're telling 60 years? No, not 60 years. Just two days. Ask your angels. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, So do you think that we have created you in vain and that you are not to return to us? Allah says, do you think that we created you just to enjoy the breakfast and the lunch and the dinner and the luxury life and to pick up your children and drop your children and to wear nice clothing? This is what you think this is the life is? No. We have created you for a purpose. We have created you with a mission, with the book, Quran. And you will be returning to us. You will be returning to us. And we will be asking every single thing. Indeed, Allah 
spoke the truth and Allah's words are always right and sometimes we do not understand and we do not try to take the heat from the beautiful teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy and make us among those, those who value the time. Say ameen. Make us among those, ya Allah, those who spend their time with the Quran, with the Salat, with the people of Allah and with the family as well. Spending the time with the family is also the act of worship. And Ya Allah make us among those, those who protect themselves from the, from the whispers of the shayateen, ameen. Those who protect themselves from all the deception of this dunya. Make this dua on a con constant basis, Ya Allah protect me from the harms of this dunya. From the deception of this dunya. I don't want to be fooled, Ya Allah, by this dunya. I don't want to be standing embarrassed and humiliated in front of you on the day of judgment just because of this dunya, Ya Allah. Just because of this one drop, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah make me wise. Make this dua, Ya Allah make me wise. Make me among those, those who think about the life of the hereafter. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la الحمد لله الحمد لله على الجزات عظيم الصفات كبير شان جليل القدر رفيع الذكر جليل البرهان سريع الحساب شديد العقاب عزيز السلطان ونشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا أيها الناس وحد الله فإن التوحيد رأس الطاعات واتقوا الله فإن التقوى بلا كل حسنات وعليكم بالسنة فإن السنة تهدي إلى الطاعة ومن أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحب المحسنين ولا تقنطوا من رحمة الله فإنه أرحم الراحمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أسجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين واستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم قال الله عز وجل في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس أعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم زنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما 
اللہ مخفلی و المؤمنین و المؤمنات و المسلمین و المسلمات الحیاء منہم و الامواد انکا سمیع قریب مجیب الدعوات یا رب العالمین یا ارحم الراحمین عباد اللہ رحمکم اللہ ان اللہ یأمر بالعدل والاحسان و ایتا اید القربا و ینہا عن الفحشاء والمنکر والبغ یعیدکم لعلکم تذکرون و لذکر اللہ تعالی اعلا و اولا و عز و جل و هم و اکبر اللہ لا الہ الا هو الحی القیوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم لہو ما فی السماوات و ما فی الارض من زل لذی یشفع عنده الا بیزنه یعلم ما بین ایدیهم و ما خلفهم ولا یحیطون بشیع من علمه الا بما شاء وسع کرسیه السماوات والارض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم عم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك تياد الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون لنا من الخاسرين اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا كاملا ويقينا صادقا وعملا متقبلا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا زاكرا ورزقا حلالا طيبا وتوبة نسوحا وتوبة قبل الموت وراحة عند الموت والمغفرة ورحمة بعد الموت والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار یا ارحم الراحمین یا رب العالمین یا رب السماوات والارض We are your sinful servants, Ya Allah Raising our hands in your presence, Ya Rabbul Alameen Looking and asking for your mercy Asking for your maghfirat and bakhshish, Ya Allah Ya Rabbul Alameen You alone we worship and you alone we seek for help With your guidance we have established the Salatul Jum'ah We ask you grant us the acceptance, Ya Allah our sins that we committed in our life, Ya Allah, especially in this year, Ya Allah, we ask you, Allah, forgive our sins, Ya Allah. Forgive all of our shortcomings, Ya Allah. Forgive all of our mistakes, Ya Allah. Mistakes that we did knowingly, unknowingly, secretly, publicly, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah, purify us, purify us, and fill our heart with your noor and with your guidance, Ya Allah. Fill our heart with your love and the love of your Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, make us among those those who moist their tongue with the Qur'an, Ya Allah, with the verses of the Holy Qur'an, Ya Allah, with the verses of the Holy Qur'an, those who moist their tongue with your zikr and with the zikr of your Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who love to be the part of the gatherings where your name and the name of your Habib is mentioned, Ya Allah. Keep us on the right path, Ya Allah, in these challenging times, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, for some of us it is difficult, Ya Allah, for all of us it is difficult, Ya Allah, to stick with our Iman and with our faith, Ya Allah, because of the multiple challenges that we face outside, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Shaitan is busy, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbul Alameen, this dunya sometimes takes us away from your, from your love and from your remembrance, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we do not want to be among those, those who just think about this dunya and those who forget you and the life of the hereafter, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we rather want to be among those, those who live in this dunya in a way that which helps them to prepare themselves for the life of the hereafter, Ya Allah. Grant us the goodness in this world, grant us all the success in this world, but only that success, Ya Allah, which will help us to remember you, which will help us to be grateful in your presence, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we don't want that success, Ya Allah. We don't want that richness of that fame, Ya Allah, which will take us away from your Iman, from your love and from your remembrance, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, Rabbul Alameen, grant us the goodness in the life of the hereafter and protect us from your wrath and from your punishment, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Rabbul Alameen, protect us from the, from the azabe kabar, Ya Allah. From the azab of Jahannam, Ya Allah. From the azab on the day of judgment, Ya Rabbus Samawati Walad. Make our children coolness of the eyes, comfort of the heart for us. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbul Alameen, our brothers and sisters, those who are ailing, suffering any kind of sickness or disease, grant them the shifa, grant them the healing, grant them the cure. Our brothers and sisters, those who just performed the hajj, Ya Allah, grant them hajj mabrur. Ya Allah, accept their all the sa'i, accept their all the difficulties and accept all their tawaf, accept their mina, their muzdalifa, their arafat, whatever they did for your sake during this hajj, Ya Allah, accept it, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Grant them the acceptance and make this hajj a means of the forgiveness for them and the entire family and 
make this hajj a means of the entry into the paradise for all of us ya allah ya rabbal alamin ya rabbus samawati wal ard those who ailing suffer many kind of sickness grant them the shifa especially our brother haji abdul wahid majid the president of this jamaat we ask allah ya allah make it easy for him grant him the fast recovery ya allah grant him the health and the strength and long life with iman with faith with good actions and with good deeds ya rabbal alamin bless this gathering ya allah bless each and everybody who is present in this gathering ya allah for the sake of our brothers and sisters those who just performed the hajj ya allah bless this gathering ya rabbal alamin bless this gathering ya allah accept our duas answer our duas things that we can't ask give us ya allah ya allah give us what is better for us ya allah what is best for us what is good for us and protect us from that which is harmful for us ya allah there are many things that we think that is good for us but in reality that is harmful that is harmful for us ya allah only you have the best knowledge only you have the better knowledge ya allah so ya rabbul alamin ya allah give us what is good and protect us from that which is which is bad ya rabbul alamin harmful ya allah protect us from all the evil of mankind from the all the evil of the jinn kind ya allah and accept our duas for the sake of your rasul who is the khatimun nabiyyin who is the rahmatul alamin who is the imamul anbiya nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqi wa nuri arshi wa zinati farshi muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in rahmatika ya rahmar rahim